Well, hey guys, it's us again, Brent and Anna from Catamaran MP. Now, we shared a post on Facebook not too long ago about the fact that we were changing our batteries for, from AGM to lithium. Now, a lot of people asked us why we went the lithium route, how much it cost us to go the lithium route, how we did the install from AGM to lithium, everything that goes around it. So, I'm no electrician, and that I want to qualify up front. Um, whenever I make comments around electrical circuits and that sort of thing as a layman sailor, um, people who are electricians get very angry with me because they say I use words I should not, like I use the word amps when I'm meant to use the word amp hours. So guys, take this from where it comes. I'm a sailor living on my boat, and I'm sharing with you guys as best as I can here. Right, so we're going to have to break this down into various episodes because it's a lengthy discussion. This is not going to be a video that appeals to people who enjoy watching us cruising to destinations. There'll be a bit of an intro which involves some sailing and, you know, where we've been in the world, who we are. That would be for newcomers and to keep a bit of a sailing theme here. But strictly speaking, this particular video is a technical video to share with those people on Facebook who have asked us to share our experiences around going lithium. So guys, we hope you enjoy. Uh, we would appreciate people with great knowledge on uh, lithium batteries to make comments below. Uh, we hope that this uh, will be helpful to many of you watching. By the way, we have a drone funding program. And this is not a funding from ourselves to fund a drone for ourselves. It happens to be a guy called Cyril and a number of other people who have asked me to do drone footage of the islands, particularly going back to New Caledonia. If you guys find this video helpful and you feel it saved you a bit of money along the ro road, well, how's about just dropping a few shekels? One dollar, two dollars, five dollars? Many people with $1, $2, $5 makes a big difference. And I would like to see it, not for myself, but for the people who really are asking me to do this. They're struggling to get that drone for us. Right, guys. Well, we hope you enjoy the video and um, we hope it's a great weekend for you all. Well, this is quite exciting. We've just uh, come from Morning Bay and we've dropped anchor here. Um, there's Keys Marina over there. And that is the place where they've delivered our LifePo 4 batteries to. Ah, we're looking forward to this. It's a new thing for us, LifePo 4 batteries, which has been transported from the West Coast, EV Power Solutions, being transported from the West Coast of Australia to here. And Anna's going to have some quiet nights again without the generator, because the old batteries, the lifelines, which we didn't enjoy at all as batteries, even since they were new, are finally done. <laughs> so we are very happy to be getting our new technology batteries in little nervous let's see how this uh, how this goes
What's this? It's just the lithium soldier arriving. These are the lithiums. These are the lithiums, baby, that are going to give you hassle-free, quiet, sleepful nights. Voila. Okay. Am I a hero now? You are my Do hero. Do I get punish or kala for this? I think you might get more than that. Oh, this sounds promising. You mean like Yui's coffee? <laughs> I could make you a cup of coffee, yeah. Oh, this would be very nice. Okay, then okay, I can't babe. help you, hey? Okay. Have you got it? Yeah. Careful, there's a wobble coming from a boat. Four hundred amp hours. Eight hundred amp hours. Oh. That was meant to be a kiss. Don't walk away. Yes, yeah, so we have uh, so Brian. How's it, Hi. Brian? And Rocky. Hi, how are you going? <laughs> and we're going to change batteries, man. And we're looking at like South African technology batteries, which mind boggles me. Alrighty, so the battery height in these particular lift lead crystals, uh, we're high to uh, it's awesome. Uh, so we're going to go two volt cells? Two volt cell yeah. batteries. Yeah. Six of them? Six yeah. of them, and it'll give us a thousand amp hours. Thousand amp hours. Right, so at this stage, let's remember some basics about batteries. Our lifelines are wired in parallel, and Brian recommending the new batteries to be wired in series. Well, what's the basic difference? In this example, you can see we have four batteries for the example, wired in parallel. Well, in parallel configuration, voltage remains consistent. It remains the same irrespective of the number of batteries in the system. So voltage is voltage. In parallel, the amp hour capacity multiplies. It adds by the rated capacity per battery for the number of batteries that one adds into the house bank. So in this example we have the four batteries, they are 12 volts each, they each have a capacity of 100 amp hour. So wired in parallel, this gives us a 400 amp hour bank capacity on a 12 volt system. Now let's look at this example of wiring batteries in series. Well we see here six batteries in my illustration, each being 100 amp hour capacity, but each being at 2 volts. Well, in series configuration, the amp hour rating remains constant. It remains the same irrespective of the number of batteries added, but the voltage of each battery is added for every battery added to the bank. It multiplies. So in this example, six batteries with a 100 amp hour capacity keeps the capacity at 100 amp hours. Remember in parallel it was the other way around. Now, with the six batteries at 2 volts apiece, we now have a 12 volt system with a capacity of 100 amp hour. Right, so just a little look at this, back to basics so to speak. So, what Brian is recommending here is that we buy six battery cells from him. Each cell is 2 volts and 1000 amp hour capacity. So, wired in series, not parallel, in series, the voltage multiplies by the number of cells. So six cells, two volts each, gives us the 12 volts required. Now in series the amp hour capacity remains a constant, so there is the 1000 amp hour. That is a great system. Uh, it's a house bank capacity of 1000 amp hours for a 12 volt system. 1000 amp hours. And and with six it? batteries. Each battery is 60 kilos. 60. Yep. Yeah. Mm, well, let's think about this for a while. 60 kilograms for each 2 volt cell. We need 6 to make a 12 volt battery. Well, 6 batteries at 60 kilograms, that gives us 360 kilogram weight. But we have a great performance system here. We have a 1000 amp hours, a 12 volt system with 6 batteries. We can safely discharge 80% of the capacity without losing too much life in the banks, we are told. So here we have an awesome 800 amp hour usable house bank capacity. Not bad. At the moment you're probably... 60. Yeah, so at the moment you've got eight, six, uh, eight, 12 
volt lifeline batteries all in parallel which is probably going to give us a weight of around 400 450 yeah. kilos well what brian is saying to us here is our current setup is eight 12 volt lifeline agm batteries at 210 amp hour capacity each well they weigh 56.2 kilograms each that's a total weight 450 kilograms now wide in parallel we have a total capacity of 1000 680 amp hours but for extended life we are recommended to discharge only 40 percent of the bank so the actual capacity available is 672 amp hours uh, being in parallel the batteries if you have one cell fail all the other batteries are only as good as the worst oh, battery i looked it up on google yesterday yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's yeah. checking it no so and it's, it's like putting mm. um a water tank at the top of a hill with five pipes running down. If they're not all the same length, curvature, dimensions, everything else, you'll have different volumes going out through different pipes. And that's what happens with these batteries. If every single cable is slightly different, different curvature, different thickness, even different tightness on the battery terminal, one battery will fail compared to other batteries. One will suck more power, one will deliver less power. Therefore, mm. you get an uneven battery bank. And Brian, what I'm really liking yeah. is that um, this doesn't have an absorption charge mode. It goes bulk, bulk. to about 90% more Correct. or less of the battery yep. and then float. Float. Very similar to lithium batteries in, yep. in many regards. So the, the, one of the big reasons why I like lead crystals, they do give you the same characteristics as a, lead, as a lithium. They will never gas, they will never vent. Yep. They, will, they can cycle them down to zero volts and not damage or hurt the battery at all. Compared to lead acid and AGM batteries, uh, gels, if you cycle the battery a bit too far, what you will suffer is sulfation. Mm. And if you have one battery sulfate more than another, it builds up more internal resistance, therefore it becomes a weak link in the batteries and then they all fail. Um, and in this particular series, you can have a look, one battery gets hotter than the other, yep. therefore that determines that battery is heavily sulfate, it has high resistance. We're having that yet actually. High resistance, yeah. high resistance you'll see in cables. And yeah. when, when you've got a high resistive cable, it gets warm yeah and that's what's happening here and it absorbs more energy lead crystal so there's still yeah. a full lead back base battery okay there the plates the lead plates internally run from the top of the battery all the way to the bottom yeah. there is zero liquid um, zero liquid zero liquid and under the heaviest discharge or charge or even an overcharge scenario it will never cause any obnoxious or dangerous gases this is lead crystal. Yeah, so these batteries actually start off as a wet battery and under the charging process before they dispatch out of the factory, they turn into salt crystals. Inside Ooh. the battery in the salt gives you very, very good conductivity between all the cells and there's a special mesh between the cells and the, the salt crystals give you 100% perfect conductivity between the cells without the cells touching physically because then it becomes a, a dead short circuit. So the difference is they won't heat up, they won't vent, they won't gas, and they won't cause any sulfation issues. So therefore okay. we last a lot longer. These, these batteries were designed to help a company in South Africa. They went around the world. To so in a marine application, we're happy. Oh, perfect. Because Excellent. many cruisers have never heard of this technology. No, I talk to them about it and they're like, what are you talking about? What are you, yeah, well, yeah. So, so now we, we, yeah. we're going to put it out there. Right? Well, we really liked these guys. They were great and put time and effort into us. But when all was said and done, we liked what we were hearing. We were losing 450 kilograms in weight on batteries that I personally have no confidence in. We were replacing these with batteries weighing 360 kilograms. Now, going on recommendations by the suppliers, the Lifeline's AGMs should be at a maximum 50% depth of discharge. That's DOD and preferably at 40% DOD. So we always recharged at 40% DOD, depth of discharge, which gives us 672 amp hours usable capacity. Now on the lead crystals, we are looking at a depth of discharge to around 80%. So on these particular batteries, it gives us 800 amp hour capacity. Well, it's a no-brainer. We are gaining 128 amp hours capacity for 90 kilograms reduction in weight it makes sense so let's get a quote brian 
Okay, so we don't want to badmouth any products here, um, but we would not be replacing these batteries with our current Lifeline batteries. So in our particular scenario on MP, just to get an example of what we're looking at, to replace what we currently have on board, here in Australia, the batteries were selling for 1089 Australian dollars a piece. Well, that includes GST, which in Australia is 10%. Well, we're not sure that we can recover the GST here, so we keep it in for the scenario. Eight batteries would cost us 8712 Australian dollars. Well, the price came in at 1115 Australian dollars each. Well, that includes GST, but still expensive. 1,115 Australian dollars, and I need six of them. That's 6,708 Australian dollars. Right, so we have figures including GST and excluding GST. As international sailors, it has yet to be seen if we can claim back the GST. Well, let's give the AGMs here the benefit of the doubt and set aside the fact that they charge slower through a bulk absorption and float charge profile. And, and let's discharge deeper than was actually recommended to us. And then for all intents and purposes, well, let's just call them equal the AGMs and the lead crystals. Let's call them equal in capacity. Well, the price difference remains a staggering $1,802. That's Australian dollars. And that excludes Brian's discount to us. Well, at this stage, we are certainly opting for the lead crystals. So in this scenario, the AGM batteries discharged as recommended to us at 40% depth of discharge works out to a cost of around $11.66 per amp hour through a complete cycle, that is before we need to recharge. Well, at 50% DOD, which some sailors do work on with AGMs, it equates to around $9.33 per amp hour. Now, when we look at the lead crystals and based on similar principles, well, they come in at around $7.55 per amp hour. And that's excluding GST. Now guys, I know that technically one needs to look far deeper than this. I mean, there are many pros and cons between the different batteries, but this gives one a good idea. And it's certainly the platform from which I tend to work. Decisions, decisions, and more decisions. We all know now that MP went with the LifePo4, the lithium style batteries, and we went with two packs of 400 amp hours each. Now, we bought these from EV Power on the west coast of Australia. An awesome guy there called Rodney Dilks must have been well pleased after I grilled him for days and nights for information and better pricing. Well, Rodney cooperated with me and, and was a very kind man. Uh, he told me to act quickly as they were going through a pricing structure change and he could give me the old pricing, a bit of a discount, you know, if I moved really fast on this. So we did. Okay, so keep in mind that there may be a price adjustment, but at this time we were in for the following. Two 400 amp hour packs making up an 800 amp hour um, battery capacity at 5,890 Australian dollars. Well, this price excludes GST, which in Australia is 10%, but this price to the right excludes the GST. Well, the GST amounts to $629, and we will see if the authorities in Australia will credit that back to us on departure or not. For now, though, we are invoiced at $6,919, including GST, but it excludes transportation costs. So, what have we purchased here? Well, two times 400 amp hour packs, making a total of 800 amp hour in bank capacity. Well, these are pre-assembled packs, wired, charged, balanced, and ready to ship. You know, as well as these two separate BCU units. So we've bought the two separate BCU units here. Well, these are battery control units or management units that manage and protect the individual packs from over-voltage, under-voltage, unbalanced cells, and more. Now, one can purchase one unit here. However, we want one per pack since this provides redundancy. Redundancy is all important to me. Well, in the scenario in lithium, should a cell become faulty, such as an over-voltage or under-voltage situation occur, or any other problem for that matter, the BCU will shut down the system. Okay, now let's see if I can explain this well enough. I am certainly no electrician, so bear with the terminology part and, you know, correct me 
in the comments below if you feel you need to. Well, here we have our two battery packs, each 400 amp hour capacity. Well, each pack has four cells as seen in blue. Now, each cell represents 3.2 volts and in series within the pack, they add to make a 12.8 volt system, 400 amp hour. Now, together the packs have 800 amp hour capacity. Well, now the positive cables from each battery, and I'm drawing half the picture here, goes through a fuse. Well, this protects the battery. And from the fuse to an external heavy-duty 500 amp relay. Well, the relay remains closed under magnetic force, and the cable continues to the positive bus bar. Well, the BCU unit you see sitting there on the left communicates with the relay if there is an issue. And if there is an issue, it will open the relay to disconnect the cable. Well, how does the BCU know? The BCU gets its information from the batteries by means of the plug-in device wired to the various cells within the pack. Now, with two BCUs and two separate packs working together for an 800 amp hour capacity here, should an error occur in one of the packs, in this scenario with two BCUs, only one pack will be shut down, the one with the problem, leaving the other pack to continue performing on its own as a 400 amp hour capacity pack. Well, I hope I explained the redundancy part well enough. Uh, let's just take a look uh, back at the value scenario. So here we have 800 amp hour capacity and on MP we will discharge 80% before recharging. So we have a usable capacity of 640 amp hours. Well, this equates with the numbers to a value of $9.82 per amp hour. Now, of course, this includes the redundancy part of the system. And if one was just looking at the battery packs alone, that would be $9.20. Now, we did have an additional cost. Um, the BCU comes with its own internal relays. However, our charging systems proved to be so powerful that we had to purchase the external heavy-duty style relays instead. So the BCU now functions as a brain-only device, reporting to these external relays. They are 500 amp relays. Well, at an additional cost of $284 excluding GST apiece, that is an extra $568 excluding GST additional to what we had anticipated. So right now we're going to unbox the, uh, the lithiums and take a look at, at what comes in those boxes. Very happy to be getting them. EV Power Systems, West Coast Australia. And uh, they have a good reputation. I hear only good things about them. So let's see. Love, I'm going to unbox the batteries. slip tax invoice wonder if Australia will give me the tax back on this when we leave they should actually whoa -ho. so there we have it our power pack EVP 12 volt 400 amp hours 400 amp hour right there Right, nice little plastic cover on the top. That looks very neat. So there's our batteries. I say I like the color. You like the color? <laughs> Selenia's dangerous goods sticker on it. Yeah, well they are dangerous goods, so we've got to be careful of that. So, uh, and do it you? also says, warning, do not over discharge or permanent damage may result. Exactly. So you, you need to have a good battery management system. Very good battery do you management. Want me to get the battery management system? Yeah, let's unbox the battery management okay. system. By the way, do you see that these are actually four different cells? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Oh, there it is. And four each one I think is 3.2 volts. 
Let's take a look at what else uh, Father Christmas brought us today. Hmm. What else did Father Christmas bring us? TNT. TNT. They were actually very good. They were, because yeah. they said it would take seven to ten days in actual fact it's taken only five. Yeah, no, they were very good. And they have good people working at the reception. The people sound very much like they enjoy working for that company. Yeah. When I speak to them, they really sound upbeat, which is nice, you know, when you do Maybe that was because it was Friday. Yeah. Very nicely packed. Can't complain about that. Guys taking really great care here. Yeah? Packing this properly. Right. So there we go. Two of them. We have two of these because we want to build in redundancy. Okay. You know, and so that means, uh, what does that mean, building in redundancy? Well, that means that if one of these packs fails, because the thing with, um, with life before batteries or lithium batteries, is that if one of these cells fails, you could potentially have a hazardous situation on your hands. So what happens is the battery management system totally shuts down the whole bank. Okay. So what happens is we now have two of these. So these banks will be working together. So we would have to have a lot of bad luck. We'd have, a lot, have to have a lot of bad luck. And so what will happen is these two are 400 amp hours each, making 800 amp hours. So we will run these management systems between the two packs. If a cell is detected with an error in one of these packs, um, the battery system will shut down that pack alone and leave redundancy with the other one in the other pack. So you'd need to have something go wrong with both packs or with both BCUs. Okay. So, so this is happiness. I'm very happy with this. And obviously these things, I mean, I'm not an expert on lithium. I'm going to become an expert on lithium. But obviously this plugs, that little plug there, plugs into the top yeah, of that battery. I think your camera can see that because it's... That little plug there, plugs into there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it now. I need a qualified guy to do this. This is new territory for me. I will not lie to you guys, I am not going to pretend to be an expert on something I'm not an expert on. So, so. we are going to exchange 400 kilos of rubbish for mm. 112 kilos of sublime, efficient electricity power. Theoretically. We'll see. Part one of our movie is now coming to an end. For us, it was backed up in real life uh, with quite a difficult time uh, where Brent wasn't feeling very well, but he still had to make decisions about what was for us quite a big investment. And I'm sure for many cruisers, it is. So uh, I hope that the homework that he has done and the movie that we have produced is going to help you to be quicker in your decision-making process, particularly if you are here in Australia or in New Zealand. The case may be very different when you, if you are in the US or in the Caribbean. But for us, the Lab 404 was the uh, best solution and I hope that that has born out in this movie. In part two you will see our hot electrician come to life putting some spark back into Impi and uh, we are very grateful to the people we have met through the down on the rally go east Justin Grunwald and two up together who will be coming with us to New Caledonia. He introduced us to Sam, Sam Brown from Overcal Electrics because Sam is a man who does not advertise because he's simply too busy. So unless you know a local in Pittwater, he will not get his number. But we are going to change all that and he is going to become an even busier man.
Sam, what do you have there, my man? Ooh. New gigantic alternator. New gigantic alternator. I like this, man. No more yeah. Belmar. No more Belmar. Go yeah. for something heavier duty than that. Yeah, very good. Because Brent always wants heavy more power. More power, man. More power to us, man. <laughs>